Sippers, welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, Shane Todd. We... <laughs> Sippers, welcome to this episode <laughs> of the Tea With Me podcast with me, Shane Todd. Before we start anything, let me plug the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Tea With Me podcast. Bonus episode on a Monday. Dan had to tell me off for the most recent Monday episode. Why, Dan? Because you took a piss mid-podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Zero respect on the bonus episode. Uh, we do a live stream on a Friday. Uh, there's early access tickets. There's the Waterfront show. In fact, that's just public now, but it is it is technically on Patreon too. Everything's on Patreon. It's like the back of the shop. You know? It's back there. If, only if you're on Patreon, do you know? Check that out. Patreon that comes to TV Podcast. Also, we're doing a big show in London. Tea with me live in London with William Thompson. And Kieran Bartlett on the twenty sixth of May. Twenty is right, Dan. Twenty sixth of May, Islington Assembly Hall. Is correct, Shane. It's all in it. Yeah, Islington Assembly Hall. Come and check that out. There's going to be wee wee benches, and you have to sit on your hands. It's not. It's not an assembly. Come to that. There might be a little bit of stand up at it too. Tickets are moving slow. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, don't let me say that. But Dan, it's a fact of life. Yeah, it will. It will be filled, but just start buying those so we can stop freaking out about it. <laughs> the links in the description. Do come to it. We need people to come. Seriously, we're sponsored by Manscaped. Now, ninety nine percent of the guys have balls. That's a fact. It's brave. Huh? Brave. What do you mean? It's brave of it's me to assume that, to or say. it's brave to have balls? Brave thing to say. Why? Why is it so brave? But it, it probably is ninety nine point something percent of guys. I'd say ninety nine point nine at least. No, I'd say 99.8. No, there's no way there's that many guys without balls. There's not many that... There's not 0.2% of guys without balls. <laughs> Switch off now. But for everyone else, <laughs> Manscaped. Manscaped.com. You can still use, if you don't have balls, you still use Manscaped because they, they do deodorants and clones and things like that. Or if you just want to work, you just want to do stuff to the shaft, you can. <laughs> but it's mainly balls related. Manscaped.com. You know all their products by now. We use them here. There's a shampoo and conditioner. There's ball toner, ball wipes of stuff for your ears and your nose and everything. Uh, we have a special discount code, which is Tea With Me, for 20% off and free shipping. Links are in the description. We're also sponsored. Yes, Dan? Could have done with a bit more in Manscaped, but okay. You want to be a bit more Manscaped? Maybe another 15 seconds. Oh, shaving your balls and all. Uh, Precision uh, tools for your family. That's it. Tools. It's, it's, the, four, it's um, it, the latest is a 4.0. There's everything in there. 4.0, you just said that out of nowhere. 4.0, 5.0, 6.0. The Weed Whacker 2.0. It's almost like Manscaped decided that adding the point oh made everything a lot cooler. There's a lot of these companies like, no, Dan, no, that's not enough. Fuck Remington. <laughs> Who are all these other guys out there? Babolus, is that one? No. <laughs> Babolus? Gillette, maybe? No, Babolus. is for your like, legs, isn't it? Yeah. Venus. No, that's not a brand. Oh, it is, it is. No, is it not Gillette Venus? <laughs> huh? It's, it's a, a planet. It's a planet. <laughs> it's silly. Don't be so silly. <laughs> if you live on the planet, you need NordVPN, even if you live <laughs> off it. VPNs are virtual private networks. The Pernect... The Protect. <laughs> I'm Pernect. <laughs> your internet connection. I'm privacy online. So if you're in a Starbucks looking at some, can I say this, tits, you need to be protected. <laughs> I like the you thought. also need to be in jail. <laughs> I like the thought that you're just on your laptop and looking at a woman's tits in Starbucks and going, I've got a VPN. <laughs> yeah. VPN. Sorry, is there oat milk on this? <laughs> <laughs> Look, no matter what you're looking at. Some tits and a butter croissant. Look, if you... If you like, if you're weird about what you look at online and you're looking at pop, like if you, if you're looking at um, local, like the intermediate league gossip column or something, you know, if you're like, Whoa, who, who's Darlingstown going to say? But you don't want people to know that's what you're looking at. NordVPN, it shields your IP address. All right. If you catch up on podcasts in public using Wi-Fi, make sure you're not the only one listening. Russians. <laughs> Russian podcast. Russian podcast. Yeah. Vodka with me. Um, you can take cybersecurity to the next level with NordVPN's threat protection feature. You don't even need it. Dan, 
right or wrong, you don't even need to connect to a VPN for that to work. That's correct. Fuck me. Access it from anywhere. <laughs> don't miss your favorite content abroad. It works on Windows, Mac, OS, iOS, anything OS. <laughs> You can get an exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash tea with me to get a huge discount. And now, by the way, I'm reading this as I learn it. Now when you purchase a two-year plan, you'll receive four-month bonus on top. Jesus. That's a sixth of what you were paying for. Quick maths. My guest today <laughs> are two young very men. Fast. Pardon? I was very fast maths. I'm very impressed. Try me. I don't have maths GCSE. Failed it three times. What? Failed it three times. Maths GCSE is like one of the things you need to get any job. Well, you needed it to get on the course I was on, but they're already. I was already on it before they, they went. About it. You should no. They went. You should have had your maths GCSE. We didn't know you didn't. We didn't check. Now you need to sit it, but it's a formality. Just sit it and get your maths GCSE. Three times. Fucked it. Kept failing it. Do quick maths with me. Go. What do you want? Well, I want you to ask me. That's not how it works. That's philosophy. <laughs> you make such a shit. Who wants to be a millionaire host? You want to go, what question do you want here? What are you asking me? Um, right, Four times me. it. 32. Correct. My guests are... <laughs> closest to me, Vittorio Angeloni. Hello. One of one of the most requested guests for the pod. That's nice. But this guy lives in... This guy lives in London. <laughs> what? So, you know, he, he he sort of comes and goes. Do you know who you come and go a bit like? Like a paramilitary guy that's been kicked out and wants to come back to taunt the people that kicked him out. So you'll be there, we sell a wee quick gig, and then you're back out to London. Can we clarify that I'm not a paramilitary guy? That's I don't think we can. <laughs> I don't think we can. I don't think we need to. I think okay. what's, I think <laughs> what's worse right. than being paramilitary is your footwear. Crocs? See, that's like, they're Crocs, but like, with that's roof? not your... With a roof? They've got a roof. Does that make sense? Yeah, like they don't have holes in the top of them? Yeah. Right. And is that custom? No, no, I'm not on Nike ID making Crocs. <laughs> It'll be Croc ID. <laughs> Sorry. Croc ID. Crocodile, Crocodile ID. Crocodile ID. <laughs> and William Thompson's here too. Um, Tutorial, <laughs> how'd you get in? How are you joking? Uh, uh, Willie T in the house. Oh, what's the crack, sir? Are you all right? All good. <laughs> <laughs> very, I'm very tight this morning, so everything's tight. So tight. Tight. How come? Tight. So my muscles are all fucking sore and shit. So. Try poppers. I have many a times. Do you poppers do, treat? Do, yeah, no, do poppers. Are no, here's what ketamine we're asking. Here's what we're asking. Do poppers just e e ease your um, anus? You That's not rectum? all they do. Or is it everywhere? When you take poppers, the, the only it's very intense feeling. The only thing I can describe it Sorry, is... Sorry, why are we like we're like kids around yeah. listening to their grandma tell us story? <laughs> <laughs> if you stand up really quickly, yeah, and you get a wee rush to the head, mm -hmm. that's poppers. I've done right. poppers, right? Just w for fun. Where? Yeah, not for work. <laughs> 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 not under threat. <laughs> I just put out of politeness. <laughs> Show up to someone's house, like take your shoes off. <laughs> Thanks for having me. So where where did you take poppers? At a party in London. It was like right. when I was a student, and someone was like, "This is fun," and I was like, "Like," because I thought I didn't realize that it was like all you had to do to take it was smell it. So I fully just went, "Oh, I'll smell it to see what it smells like." Uh, and they were like, "Ah, you did it, right?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. So You're gay now. <laughs> no, not again. And how did you feel? It's it's like exciting, right? Do you know what I mean? But I didn't feel the bum hole relaxing, right? Well, maybe well, it was already, maybe it already was. I don't think you do. No, but it, but it happens. You might have just a relaxed anus anyway. I think I do. Um, it's something I've worked on, <laughs> and you love it, poppers. <laughs> They're all right, yeah. They're not my favorite, but I'll do right. them. What are your favorite bum relaxants? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice bath. I am proud. Just a nice bath and some at the party. <laughs> Yo, get the yeah. Redox in there. <laughs> a nice bath and just a lovely wee story at the end of the news. Seems like someone finds a lost dog. Come oh, on, the the heartwarming oh. one yeah, at the yeah, end. After, they don't do that anymore. No, I don't think so. Local news, they do. It's all doom and gloom. Don't watch. They'll always be like a net. He was shot seventeen times, and now a young man at the local community center has found a way, I don't know. It's yes. always something really fucking boring. Yeah. To, 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 after all the doom and gloom, and that relaxes me. They went to dig up a time capsule, but they forgot where it was buried. Oh, the, you know? 
I have a time capsule. She's the guy who does poppers. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Do I? All right, yeah. I I did a time capsule at the Millennium. But Sounds I, like an E the way you're saying it. Like it was a pill called a time capsule. Hey, well, a time capsule. <laughs> but I don't live in that house anymore. Do I have any jurisdiction to go in and dig it up? It depends. Is it like? Is it listed on the deed of the house? Yeah. <laughs> the house, the garden. No, but I think. Do you think capsule? that's that's surely etiquette? If I show up, oh, I did it. Can I? Although I don't know the etiquette around time capsules. Is it capsules? under the floorboards? Like if you have to excavate the living room. If they've redone the garden, mm -hmm. then you don't have any right to it anymore. But if the garden is as is and slightly unkempt and it hasn't been looked after in the way you specified, yeah, uh, then I think you can go get your... What was in the time capsule? There was an old 50p, which was the 50p at the time. You, you boys won't remember this. They were a lot thicker, the 50ps. <laughs> you couldn't lift the 50p by yourself. still an onagon? Hmm? They still an onagon? No, they're a septagon. I thought you said and a stun gun. I was like, <laughs> no, that's it's my not. 50p. That's not reflective of my life in 1999. <laughs> <laughs> they always have to use this to get my dad. Um, septagon is a 50p, isn't it? Seven sides. I thought. It was what a did I tell you about maths? I it's not a, a pentagon. I thought it was a hexagon. That's where the president lives. You fucking idiot. <laughs> uh, do you know how you know that no one really cares about Joe Biden? The security to get into Belfast the night he was here was non-existent. Like, do you know they lost the document? Huh? They left the document in the street. I just happened to listen to the Nolan show. What do you mean a document? Like that had all the police officers' names that were protecting him, all their phone numbers, all the code words that they were using. Oh fuck! For like his whole stage time. times and shit. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> like his whole itinerary. <laughs> like, fuck me. The lineup for the gig. Where did the fact they have the find? On the street. But they didn't know that they'd lost it, and the most Northern Ireland thing ever, the guy who found it on the street didn't go to the police, he immediately phoned the Nolan show. Right. He was like, I found this, and Nolan was like, we've got the inside scoop on. <laughs> Holy shit. And like, Nolan told the PSNI, and they were like, we're looking into it. Fuck were you doing listening to the Nolan show, is my question. I was in my uncle's car, and just like everybody else's uncle, he goes, I was threatening you, <laughs> smell this and listen to this. <laughs> The car wasn't even on. I don't know what's worse. It was in my uncle's car in the garage, and there was a pipe from the exhaust. The, <laughs> <laughs> the best way to enjoy the you could pop it up and listen to the Nolan. Pop it up and commit suicide while listening to the Nolan show. <laughs> I used to listen to the Nolan show every. For anyone who doesn't know it is, local political debate show, Grim. And I used to listen to it every morning and realise, like, and couldn't work out why I was, like, angry. All the time. angry. Well, this is the thing, my uncle, like, in the car, or no, he'd be like, I, like fucking, I fucking hate this guy, and then turns it up. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's how everyone listens to the Nolan yeah. show. They're like, I'm, fuck's sake. Yeah. Even I went to say, I took a date to see it live, and like, I don't... Sorry, sorry. <laughs> 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 how come that didn't work out? <laughs> <laughs> it actually did. It did. We ended up going out together, but I remember taking a date to see it live. I don't know, I had tickets to it. I so was you said to her, with... listen, I'm, I'm taking you out tonight. We're going to <laughs> sit for... Yeah. Probably three hours yeah. in Blackstaff yeah. Studio to watch people debate yeah. local issues. Did you ask any questions? No. Excuse no. me, what do you think about this? <laughs> nah, I'm just sitting there angry. That You're sitting there raging for 45 minutes. Yeah. It's like the old bit you used to do. You'd sit there being like, and what do you think about murdered families? And then yes. he'll just go, so I have to cut you off. It's Chico time. Yeah, yeah. And he'll yeah. bring out <laughs> yeah. like a because weird Because they always overran, so they didn't have a time to segue to the guest. So yeah, it would be like, so yeah, you know... Yeah, you lost your legs in this and blah, blah, blah. And then the, the guy go to talk and then be like, actually, here's Nathan Carter. And the guy's still like... <laughs> yeah. No but, and by the way, the audience were never like this. We're, as the audience were only there for the music in. guest. So they're like, fuck, get this guy off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I, I used to do Just wheel him away. I talk can, about this can you time. remember ever, like, classic Nolan episodes? You know, ones where everyone was watching? I remember, I remember the flag Katie protest Hopkins being on. Yes. I talked to them about this recently. The flag protest, they didn't have warm up. That was the only time they've ever dropped it. I don't know why they have stand up before the show. That's, that's, that's that's like that crowd was hot. Thing. I do they remember, right? And I did do a bit of stand up at this years ago. Um, there was one week where I was just, sta I would go on stand up and then I'd just be in the green room, but it mainly just be me because everyone's either waiting to, in the wings to go on the show or whatever. Yeah. So it was only me in this big BBC building. And they brought, a runner brought this guy in. Mo Farah brought this guy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, right? They brought this guy in, and the guy was just like, you're weird, right? And they had a Sharpie with him and some to sign, and they went, Shane, Shane, must introduce you to, so he was called Kevin, must introduce you to Kevin. They went, he's a, he's a bit of a super fan. And the guy's like, yeah. 
And I went, all right, okay. And I've been in a good few years at this point, so I was like, all right. And they went, yeah, 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 he, 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 he loves it. Like, he loves it. And I went, all right, man. And I was chatting, because I was like, fucking hell, this is kind of like a wee bit of an ego boost. Mm. So I'm chatting away to him and all, and do doesn't seem that interested. I was like, he's obviously, like, nervous and, you know, about meeting me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gigging away. I had to make conversation. I was like, yeah, I'm gigging away here and a bit awkward doing this. Talked to the guy for half an hour, and he's stand, and he's waiting to get something signed. And at the end of it, I went, uh, do you, I had to like go or I had to do something I went do you, do you want me to sign that mate or, and he, he's like no 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 and I went fuck it's weird he was a super, it was Spandau Ballet who were performing <laughs> the no one told me that because at one point I went to him like what was the first gig you saw and he's like oh Birmingham I was like I'd never performed there he's like no 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 Birmingham, well, Birmingham. this guy's going to murder me uh, but he just wanted to meet Spandau Ballet how long did you do the, the warm up for Nolan Forks you did it for a while 10 episodes I think and the first one I talked about this on a pod recently can't remember who was on but the first one absolutely killed it was unreal it was brilliant I went this is class and it never worked again and it was people yeah. would look at you being like why are you doing this as if you audience, you decided yes. to do it you'd let phoned me do up turn. the BBC and gone let would me you do mind a if I, I did this what's the most out of context gig you've ever done people be like oh I want you to come and do a gig at this and you get to it and you go there should be no stand up at this well I mean apart from like the, I did like a car park one during Covid where yes. they were like to it beat, was like drive, drive yeah like a drive in cinema type thing and they beat their horns when you, you, when they thought it was funny sounded like you were on Westwood <laughs> <laughs> hold up now, punchlines saw, baby I saw those and uh, those gigs and that was the time where you couldn't do any stand up mm. so I was jealous I was like I want to go and do those were they was it grim so bad a couple of reasons why so, you, so you're on stage uh, hundreds of cars, presumably. Like 80 cars. Hear. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the centre forecourt. <laughs> you can't... I was host... I was emceeing, and I went on, and I was like, just as a check, right? Just to see what the crack is. I haven't done one of these before. Um, can everybody... Like, everybody do a massive fake laugh <laughs> and round of applause just to see if we can hear anything. On the count of three. One, two, three. Complete <laughs> silence. Because they were all in their cars with the windows up. <laughs> And they were just like, just the, a muffled like. <laughs> now, if they like it, they beep their horn. If they don't, what is it, hazards? No, <laughs> they don't like something. But there was some, so I didn't do these ones. I was lucky enough to do one of the horn ones where, <laughs> but the problem with the horn ones is that, it, <laughs> is that it turns, like your natural response to hearing a car horn is, oh fuck, I've done something wrong. Yeah. So when 80 cars are like, Bleh, you're like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But then the other thing is people don't, if people laugh, they don't immediately like hit their horn. So there's like a delay where you had to say the joke and then wait a couple because they'll laugh and then they'll hit their horn. And sometimes you would tell a joke and you'd be like, yeah. And you just have to wait there. And then the horn, like not, they didn't come because nobody laughed, but you didn't know yet. And one guy would just go, Babe. <laughs> just we be did, like move on we did a move. similar thing except people weren't in cars but it was outdoor and I wish they had horns yeah. what was the festival we did um, Dalriada Dalriada yeah. I think we were on straight after an ABBA tribute act <laughs> <laughs> so it's this big massive stage and there's a couple of thousand people it's like a big big field yeah. and they're just finishing up Waterloo and then I'm coming on being like fucking ISIS <laughs> <laughs> what sorry some kids pissing they themselves. also weren't doing support yeah. by the way <laughs> He's talking about the material. <laughs> but me, you, and Diona did it, and it actually like the weird thing is when you actually looked, there was people like listening and enjoying it, but you just never got that. Yeah, no, I got because of this. It was one of those gigs I came up going that was fucking awful. So many positive messages yeah, yeah, after yeah. it, yeah. but during it, you're like, this is terrible. You go through about twenty minutes of material in about four minutes. Was yeah. it worse or better than that one we did in Woodville? It was better because there was more than four people at it. Didn't you do an outdoor gig set up for thousands? Yeah. To like a, a couple of, was, it, was there a couple <laughs> of like those? Maybe 50. Eight people. <laughs> like maybe, and they were at picnic tables. Being serious, how much could how much could the area have got in if you ran people? At least a thousand. And I think he's being conservative with that estimate. Like it was a massive, massive it's a park. Area. <laughs> Literally. I remember someone did you dirty with a photo of it because it was like, <laughs> there was on stage, the giant screens. And like they could have gone beside the eight people who were there. 
took a photo of the back of their heads and framed that. Yeah. But they took it from like the back loads of, of like grass. a hill. Yeah. Loads and loads of grass. It looked like we were doing like a sound check while the gig was on. Yeah. That was fucking terrible. Wasn't there that story of at Stendhal, uh, Cormac McDermott was doing the the big stage in the middle of the festival and like, yes. like kids are walking through and he'd said to them like, I'm just going to do my set. Yeah, like, I'm not yeah. changing anything. Yeah. And he walks on like, cause there was a separate stage where like, it was me, Mickey and Robbie did a show and it was great. Cause it was like tucked away. Yes. So anyone who was there wanted to be there. Yeah. yeah. But the main stage where the other show was on, were you on that show? It was the Woodland stage. So if you don't know the Woodland stage, it's like, for those who don't know, they're sent <laughs> <laughs> It's a Not little fucking pyramid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, really <laughs> it's very much the, the the studios of Disneyland of Stanton. So there's little mushrooms and seesaws and little. It's basically like a playground where they set up a stage. Right. So there's kids just playing games and Everywhere. Cormac's on stage. Being Cormac, like, Cormac, Cormac walks on and goes, "If you brought your stupid fucking kids, you can suck my dick." Uh, and he's being like, "In this fucking fopper was on my face. I'm just fucking rimming her." That was his but it was all line. hippies are at it. So they just like, introduced Brian Kennedy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Hi- yeah, it's hippies. It was the yeah. maddest thing. I know. Because we did a little lap of the audience of the Tucked Away gig and went, just so you know, it's going to be like ov- mostly over 18. So, like, if you're not sure about, like, if the kids or whatever. And these, like, mad hippies just went, just said to their kids, like, oh, you guys go. They love it. And these four year old kids just wandered off into yeah. a music and festival. You're, yeah, you're I- performing a 50 year old man who have dreadlocks and they're white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've done stand hall a lot of times, and the the parents love it. Yeah, when you swear the more vulgar because they the, the organizer are like yeah you just watch that and stuff, but the parents are the ones that are really into it. Yeah. The dirtier stuff you go, yeah. and you're right, they just send their kids off because it is a family festival. So I feel everyone's walking on eggshells. Yeah, apart from the comedians who the worst thing you can tell any comedians is don't do these three things because all we think is. I'm doing those three things straight away. Yeah, poppers. So, poppers, coke. yeah. Warren Crocs, doing yeah. it all. <laughs> Worst corporate you've ever done, if there's any that springs to mind. You go, you, you're at, your eyes lit up. Yeah. What's yours? The one we did together, it was me, you, Patty, and maybe Kieran or Diona. It was the Limelight Freshers Fair of, I'm going to say, 2019. Tell me why you think that was bad, and I'll tell you why I think it was 100%. The stand-up didn't need to be at it. So yeah, but the beauty of that was... Not one person was listening. It was a huge freshers fair. And they people were going like to all the stalls. About getting pens, doing the whole thing. We're in the corner. Some people are getting tattoos and there's a DJ. People are getting even think stopped. We're in the corner doing stand-up. I think that was fine because that was well paid. And not mm. one person was listening. So it's not like... I think that was fine, do you? Because as soon as you were finished, you literally leapt off stage and ran out a fire door. <laughs> Well, that's um, not the behaviour of a man who had a good one. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's the behaviour of a man Thank who you has so much. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that is. So I said the Dom. I said the Dom. Because what I hate is, I knew it was going to be like terrible, <clears throat> but I don't like doing a gig. You know it's going to be bad. And then people come up to you after and they're like, mate, that was brilliant though. Just because they're just saying it. Yeah. I don't like going through that. If I have a bad one, let's talk about the fact that I had a bad one. Yeah. I remember just saying, knowing what the gig was going to be like, and I said to Dom, keep that fire door ajar there, because when I'm finished, I'm going to walk out to my car and leave. You're like Kevin Hart. Yeah. <laughs> Straight out yeah. the door into the Hummer. And I, was, I did it before him. <laughs> Where's Aaron Butler? Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to be getting hit for that for no reason. You fucking on that book. <laughs> Butler showing up to Kevin Hart. And why do do you see how that could come across? So as um, <laughs> I need to listen because I'm I only got filled in on the drama yesterday. So I, I I don't mind those ones mm. where they're just no one's listening at all and we can just like do it and yeah. go. I left a gig. I did that once where I left during the. I was doing a gig with Paddy McGacky in a place called Safe House or something. It was a wee art space in the cathedral quarter, and it was a real, like, they say, like, alternative arty gig. It just was not really great. <laughs> <laughs> it was BYO, and people had nice wine. Right, yeah, probably. You know what I mean? And, like, yeah. Estonian beers, right? And, um... <laughs> the height of class. <laughs> well, the ambassador was in, right? So I go on, and, uh... I, me and Paddy McGacky have been doing a gig, and this is maybe, like, 13 years ago, and on the way back, Paddy's like, we'll jump in there and see if we can do a gig. And I went on and they just like didn't like me at all. And I remember for some reason, what stands out to me is I was wearing a 300 t-shirt. Remember the movie? 
I had a 300 yeah. t-shirt. I was the only guy that had merch. Of it. <laughs> Which was, what did it, did it just say 300 or was it the guy booting the guy in the chest? No, that would have been cooler. It was just like the movie logo. <laughs> Weird, just right? Just papyrus font or whatever. It's yeah. <laughs> so I remember. Are you sure that was merch? It was no. I remember it being official merch. If you'd have told me Papyrus Font was a guy in the movie, I'd believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Papyrus Font's the guy with the dreadlocks. Yeah. Papyrus Font, <laughs> father to a murdered. <laughs> <laughs> My kids are off getting full of um, So I remember going on to do five minutes, mm. two minutes in, going, they don't like me mm. and what I'm all about. And I went, but this is, they're all being a bit alternative and wacky here. So why don't I do some like a wacky stage thing? <laughs> so I, I was like two minutes in. How I did went, I pander? I, went, I, I was like, why? I, sorry, guys, my phone's vibrating. I'm so sorry and all. And I, I took it and I went, hello? Huh? I, I, I remember saying to him, I went, we'll, we'll go with this. And I was like, hello? What? Hmm? My, my mom? Right, I'm just doing a... Get, Okay, well, I'm, I'm coming. Oh. That's my bit. And I put the mic in the stand and just really slowly started like walking towards the, it was a wee small art gallery room and I just walked towards the door. I went, guys, I'm so sorry. Ran down the stairs, walked across the road to my car and as I got in my car, I remember everyone from the gigs, there was like 30 people, ran over to the windows and was looking down all concerned and I just went, got in my car and just drove home. <laughs> It was all made up. I just wanted to leave. <laughs> they thought someone had died in my family. And Patty, and I forgot to Wait, tell Patty. You set this up so strange. You're like, I'm going to do something wacky. I, I knew I was going to leave, so I pretended to them. I was like, I'm going to, you know, some mad phone call. And then I was like, oh, I'll, pretend, I'll pretend someone's died. And then I just got in my car and went home. The fact and I forgot what? to text Paddy McGacky and go, mate, that was only a joke. Because he texted me and went, everything all good. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, oh, Paddy's so sweet as well. Yeah, I was like, I think Paddy's still there. <laughs> waiting for me to come on it's about you went here guys so we'll go with us yeah yeah to the hospital yeah and then Mom's I just dead? dropped my face and I was like fuck by the way that's not what wacky means yeah like, well, you're like, guys are like see that guy who's mad dude crazy, crazy. <laughs> that'd be a really funny like 40 minutes ad bit in the fringe show <laughs> <laughs> just be like oh, every day <laughs> There's a, there's a story of this man. Well, he's just about to change his show. <laughs> no, that literally is my show. Oh, so yeah. I just remember. <laughs> that literally is my show. Oh, I just remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do forget sometimes as well. Oh, That's what comes back to you. you, you well, like you're going to. I'll, like, I'll, ring, my, I'll <laughs> ring my mom. They'll be like, I don't have that or not. Oh, that's right. She doesn't have a number. Better than when my nanny got one of those scam fucking texts. It was like, hi, mum, it's it's me. Um, Just let you know I've got a new phone. And na my nanny's like, your mum's text me. I'm like, mum's been dead eight years. <laughs> so not only has she been resurrected, she's got a new tariff as well, has she? I don't that's think so that's true. her. <laughs> <laughs> I know she's not resurrected because she would not be with Vodafone. <laughs> so that wouldn't be her. <laughs> Yeah, it's like she's in heaven, but she's got an Android. Yeah. <laughs> oh my! There's I just, thought that was just there's this guy's comedian uh, Liam Bolton who's fucking mad. Like you literally never Bolt? know what he's gonna. Yeah, he's phenomenal. So funny. Yeah, he's really good. Like amazing. Like, but he you never know what he's gonna do ever. Like he's been on at the weekend, the hot water, and just walks on and hoovers the stage for fifteen minutes, right? And then just leaves, right? And there's a story of him doing a... Which, by the way, I can tell if you're in the room at the time, 10 out of 10, hilarious. But there will be people listening and watching to this going... What? Right. <laughs> like, yeah. what? <laughs> like, but what's good Yeah, that, that. That'd, that'd be hilarious. Yeah, amazing. To, to have, like, Paul Smith MC in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'd just be like... Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. But there's a story of him doing a gig similar to you where it's like the stage has, like, big windows behind it. And it's in, um, I think it's on Bold... No, Hardman Street, Liverpool. And it's across from the bombed out church. Which is like such a funny name for a, a place, but it is a like we were there. Oh, that's its name. It's called the Bombed Out Church. Oh yeah, it's like the shell of a church, and they do like little events, and sometimes it's like a beer garden. Yes. Liam was on stage. He comes on stage, and uh, it's like fifty people in the room, and he walks on, and somebody like you know, occasionally when you're walking on a stage through the audience, somebody will reach out a hand to like high five you or like fist bump you or like shake your hand, and he shook this guy's hand and went, oh fuck, and shook the guy next to him's hand and went, oh fuck. 
shook the guy next to him's hand and went, oh, fuck, and just shook everybody, all 50 people's <laughs> hands in the room. And as he's walking back up to the stage, the big window's there, he goes, oh, fuck, runs downstairs across the road. All 50 people go up to the windows and look. He's across the road at the beer garden, shaking hands with everybody in the beer garden. <laughs> And he's murdering in a room that he's not <laughs> at. <laughs> and he shakes hands with everybody, runs back upstairs and goes, I have a Liam Bolton, thank you very much. And just fucks I off. I mean, the worst thing is being on, going on after that and going, oh, my dad's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. What's even worse is that bit just not working. Yeah. But he wouldn't know. He admitted to it. He wouldn't know at all. <laughs> I can't get over the idea. The bombed out church. Yeah. He was walking around the rubble, that man, like, I'd love a pint in here. Yeah, but it, it's beautiful. It looks class. So we we did, we were doing a gig in hot water in Liverpool mm. on my tour about two years ago. More? Was it that long? Maybe a year and a half. It was post COVID. Right. Um and we <laughs> trying to do a post Malone joke there. And um, Do you know what's even worse? I was thinking of that yeah, term yeah, when yeah. I'm not gonna Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's leave it. Yeah, yeah. Let's Don't leave it. Let's yeah, leave yeah. it. Let's not waste we got the people's time. Nah. Workshop it. Uh, I've got none. Um, and always tired also applies for post COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should have left it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I did deliver Sorry. a letter to the Upper Lisburn Road later. You could say I have to. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> deliver no, no, deliver no, 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 what I do you <laughs> say I got you whacking where about big shooter so, so for us. doing Liverpool on tour mm -hmm. there was a fire in the venue it was the the craziest thing about it was so it was in the basement we probably talked about this a, year, a couple of years ago on the podcast but just as we were about to go on yeah everybody's in the room the whole crowd's just there waiting and they're the packed start. into the basement of hot water and so, uh, manager comes in and very calmly in, in her I think we'd already goes, done like a five minute call like the show yeah. is about to start the music's playing and she comes in the manager and very calmly in her sky accent goes there's a fucking fire <laughs> she's the manager <laughs> fucking fire yeah. run you yeah. know when people are like don't run she's like fucking run <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was Liam Bolton on so I'm like you know listen this, don't worry he's just doing yeah, an online spot here so it's all good <laughs> You know when people, you know when you do that thing of like you don't run, you like you don't leave. Like the fire alarms are going off, someone's like run, yeah. everyone's running. Like you're going, oh, come Smooth. on, yeah. come on, this is all good. I'm saddled. I'm not getting up. There was a point where we went, oh no, this is maybe real, but it was because it was a crowd of pe a lot of people from home who were over in Liverpool. They weren't as quick to leave. If that happens in London, drinks are everyone's smashing, out. everyone's yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was lads like. But I've, I've half a pint here. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Willing to chance it. <laughs> and, like the guys in the Just Titanic. A, a flame being like, yeah. was he a quid? There was like four guys, like the, the band in the Titanic. Just like, <laughs> in a, in a with cloud you. with their smithics. Just like, nah, lads, you go on. And um, I remember the main fear for me was running out and I had just if you remember I just bought a coat in Zara that day you had yeah in Liverpool 1 really long Which you, you know, do I still every have my mummy day, coat every day of the tour you buy a new coat from Zara yes and this is my long mummy coat picking up the kids from school <laughs> and I remember running out and I remember looking at you and thinking you know listen should one one of us should maybe go back and get, my get coat. the coat <laughs> and I remember I waited for you to offer and then I was like I think he's, he wants to survive, so I went out myself <laughs> and did it. Um, and I remember com coming out of the coming out of the smoke, and they were like, "He saved someone." I was like, "It's hundred and five pounds." Um, and we were standing like us and the whole audience um, on the side of the road, mm -hmm. and Liam Bolton was there. That's the night I met him. Yeah, so he was there. And the reason I'm bringing it up is you mentioned the bombed out church. We went across the road. Adam Rowe came up to me. He'd been doing a show in the venue earlier that night, and went, "Why don't you just save?" Because the fire engines are coming, there's a fire, and he went, "Why not go across the road? The bombed out church have a, it, no one's in it. Yeah, see if they'll let you put on the gig, and they'll make a killing at the bar." And I remember going over with Adam and going to the barman, just really quiet, wedding scene night. It was like, yeah. "Do you want the hundred and fifty people in here now?" And I, I'm do, gonna do stand up, and he just went, "I have to." He lapped it. He's like, "Oh yeah, I have to phone that, yeah. somebody," and then they didn't want to do it. But do you know Because he's clocking off. It's a quiet of Wednesday night. He's like, hey, do he's you want 150 a here so yes. you don't get to go home early? Yeah. No, I don't. But the fire engines were out there for about an hour and a half and I wanted to pull it. 
and everyone's going just because it was it was a late show anyway. Yeah, it was supposed to start at half nine. It was supposed to start at half nine. It was about twenty past ten, and I was like, "We That's are not starting the show." And the whole crowd had just been standing in the street. A few people went to the pub across the road. People got carryouts too. Yeah, people went and got carryouts, and then we ended up <laughs> doing the show. And I was so worried. Remember, I was like, "It won't be good because people will just want to talk about the fire." Yeah, they won't be interested in any actual material. Um, and it was one of the best. Yeah, I went on and did three minutes at the top. Yeah, <laughs> about the fire. And Shane was like, I'm for bed here. Can you yeah, do yeah, three yeah. minutes at yeah. the top? And I was like, I well, did fire's set, weird in the I did half my set in FaceTime walking back to the hotel. <laughs> 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 that was a wild. That was, that's a night I'll always remember. I think I might have booked you for one of your worst gigs and I still feel bad about it. I want to talk to you about this. Yeah. I've been holding on to this for I a long time. This. So, I want to know your side Seven of years ago? Uh, it was when I was like second year in uni, so yeah, maybe seven years ago. So I get a mail, would you like to come over to London? This girl is like, I'm entertainment manager or something at a university. Yeah. We'd like to book you for a party. Was it a party stay gig? Uh, I think it was just a stand-up. We were doing like a comedy night. We'd for... like to book you to come over. And I'd never been asked to go anywhere outside of maybe like Moira. <laughs> okay, right? yeah. So, sorry. And um, <laughs> there's cherry in that one. So, <laughs> well, I, yeah. I've never seen you do It's that. coming into the warmer weather. Is there SPF in that? Okay. Uh, do you want some? <laughs> Put it in your arse, mate. But anyway. <laughs> Put it in Carmax on your It's a new Carmax adver- advertising campaign. Willie just rimming. <laughs> in the face of Carmax. <laughs> You're in your red canoe. <laughs> oh, you're getting burnt there. Oh. Ah, don't do that. <laughs> People sum their assholes, don't they? Pardon? It's like a yoga thing. <laughs> it's a yoga thing? Yeah. That's why you're banned from taking yoga <laughs> at the leisure centre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People sum their hoops. Like, they try to get UV into the, like, in their ass. Apparently, right. it's good for your insides. I, well, my cure, my cure, my cure, my <laughs> Jesus Christ, me at the top of Cave Hill for our morning on all fours. You can tell you've lived in London a while. You, yeah. re- do you know what I mean? Well, like, what do you call you? You know those reflective things people hold up yeah. to get a tan Mers? on your ass. No, yeah. the wee foil. Like yeah, the, you hold. I want you to hold foil under my arse tomorrow at the top of Cave Hill. <laughs> Four Lars and hog. <laughs> But just like we're worried about, you know, economic collapse here, you know, are, are, are you know, is, are gangs on the rise? And you're like, people sunning their assholes, it's a real issue. <laughs> yeah. It is, but apparently it's really good for you. Why was this brought up? Like, uh, like three, like two minutes ago? What? Oh, the gig you asked me to do. Um, <laughs> I can't, but I don't know how we got there. I don't either. But I remember being so pumped at the time. I was like, I'm being asked to go to London mm. to play at a university. Just me. Um... I also got a guy to open a guy I knew was, he was an, <laughs> for a time. Uh, he was an Irish comic living in London. Um, I actually, for the life of me, can't remember his name. I didn't know him. I did a festival. I did a Kilkenny festival. Mm. Saw a guy's name on a poster. Thought he was the guy. So there's a comedian on Facebook. I, I asked a guy. He was not the right guy. Because on the way walking to the gig, I, I messaged this guy, would you open for me 50 quid or something at a university? He's like, yeah, man. And he was so buzzing. I was like, this guy's getting flown over for festivals. Why is he so happy at this? And then as we were walking into the venue, I went, yeah, because we did Kilkenny Festival. And the guy's like, I've never done that in my life. Yeah. Like, I haven't done stand up that long. I'm just buzzing to be here. So I was like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we go and I see like a big, busy student union. Yeah. And I'm like, this is unreal. When I arrived, a guy go came up to me and she went, this is Jay or someone. Guy's there, black bomber jacket, suit, tie, top knot. He's vaguely Asian, right? The guy goes... What the fuck's that? Like, like there's a that. suggestion of asian yeah. about him. No, yeah. no, I can't be the only one confused by the words vaguely Asian. Yeah. What's vaguely Asian? Like, you like know... chopsticks? He's, or he's just... No, it's very Asian. No, Wagamama's vaguely Asian. Yes. A human wagamom. Right, okay. So he's, he's just munching on a katsu. Sorry, continue. So this guy goes, um, I, he kept being with me everywhere. And I went, well, maybe he's on too. Like, he was always by my side. And I'm like, that's a bit weird. And he goes, yeah, I've done security for everyone. I was like, all right, what are you at tonight? He goes, I'm your security. 
I oh, went, I know who exactly. His name's Stephen. Steve, I, exactly I was like, I was like, was. I was like Stephen. <laughs> Stephen. Yeah, he's it's Filipino, my, which is vaguely Asian. Uh, no, that's just outright Asian. Asian. I have no. The gift. Filipinos are the least Asian Asians. They're still Asian. No. No, but you know what I mean. They're the least Asian. Are the Philippines Asian. in Asia? Yeah. yeah. Vaguely. There you go. Vaguely. <laughs> They're on the border. Yeah. It's like Nuri. Stephen. <laughs> I remember saying to Stephen, who was my personal security for the night seven years ago, I said, Stephen, it might be a quiet one for you tonight. I don't think you'll have much action. He goes, but I'll stop people getting to you. I was like, no, let the, I like, I want to say a little bit, I want praise or whatever. Like, I've never had this in my life. So I had a security guy. They take me to this, like, they go, this is your, like, green room, your dressing room. I was to do, like, 40 minutes of stand-up or something. And it's a room that holds about 50 people. Yeah, quite a long room, but it's, like, nice. But it's just cordoned off for me kind of so I'm like this is okay well, I went where's the gig and they point out the student union bar pool tables all that kind of thing and I went right right well there's still like quite a lot of people here to see me they get whoever the fuck goes on right some guy who you messaged some guy some like, guy who's there at your request but you don't know who he is some guy <laughs> that I was that I thought would be great for it and wasn't the guy imagine a guy sitting here I mean you, can you do warm up you show up and he's like who the fuck are you <laughs> guy didn't such do, a party the guy didn't do stand up <laughs> No, he did. He's just an Irish guy. He just worked in Sports Direct. He had to go on. Uh, this guy goes on, and to be fair, is okay. But I realise, very few people, there's maybe like 40 people here for the comedy. Everyone else just is in the student union. You know one of those ones where it's not closed off? There's just people there. Some of them are interested, some aren't. And I remember at the interval, going to the girl who booked it, let's take it a bit like the bombed out church yeah let's take all the interested people and put them in the room purpose built for the amount of people who are interested <laughs> yeah. see the room the, the bespoke performance room <laughs> Stephen me and Stephen <laughs> will move chairs in there we have time and she was like you know one of those ones where she's like and she's totally dead on but she's like yeah I just don't think and I'm like I don't we could we could <laughs> We could do this. Shout out to Rachel. We could, Rachel. If me, you, and Steve, me, you, and Stephen could have had this set up, I know it would look like a Netflix special in there. And they were like, Stephen's like, nah, nah, I need that for your personal space. You know, I need that as a panic room. I'm like, Stephen, I'm panicking that no one gives a fuck about me in this room. And and I remember, I remember like doing a set, and I remember you and maybe four or five guys watching, and I, everyone else was watching fucking Big Break, people playing. I feel so bad. So what happened was, uh, I was just sad on stage. I really pushed for you to like to for us to like fly you over for the game. Yeah. I was like, he's fucking class. Yeah. it's gonna be unreal. He'll need his own deta security <laughs> detail. <laughs> Stephen, like, make sure you're free. <laughs> <laughs> What's your recollection of that gig? So I, you said this guy is, he's big deal back home. This is before I've started stand up. Yeah. I was well, I was like vice president of the students union, so I was like, <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, no, sorry. Yep, that's a confirmed cool guy alert. Yeah, I'm staying <laughs> in the Grand Central Hotel. <laughs> There's more security for you here than there was for Biden. <laughs> Nobody give a fuck. He was talking about China, China getting his dinner. <laughs> like, All right, man. Being really racist to everybody in there. <laughs> Stevens are like, mm, I don't think I need any of this. <laughs> that's not even Asian enough for me. It was a Filipino, Filipino. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so I said to them, look, I think we should have comedy nights on. It's a great, and it's like not like bands, like cost, like so many different people to pay and all that stuff. I think stand-up comedy is going to be really good here. So I said, Shane's fucking brilliant, blah, 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 blah. So you, and then... It was like, great, we've got it all set up. And it's like, and it is quite a cool venue. It is, yeah. Like, even though it is like a full student union, the bar is like just there. And I was like, this is going to be great. Because it's normally very quiet in there. It's not like a really busy student union. But the problem was the Uni Symphony Orchestra had had a concert that night. Mugged by the Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> so a hundred people all arrived to have their post-concert, like, night out. Ah, right. And... I was like, as soon as I walked in, I was like, fuck, fuck, this is the mod lads like, are here. Of, <laughs> <laughs> fuck, the symphony orchestra fuck, hoots. The bassoon boys have arrived. <laughs> the cellist is getting chamomile for everyone. It's the bassoon ultras. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you hear that? Back sevens. 
<laughs> Diamond on classical music. Did you hear that box happens? <laughs> it's like a formation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the rowdy bassoon boys had arrived, and I was like, oh no, this is a nightmare. Stephen, oh, prepare yourself. Can we please pitch the rowdy bassoon boys as like a shit picky blinders <laughs> with the rowdy bassoon boys? <laughs> That's the maddest thing about music college is people still sort themselves into like bullies. Busy music college is everybody who's been bullied the most in the UK all goes to one unit. But then people who play the bassoon decide they're an alpha and start being mean to people. Oh, so I was going to ask, what's the like, what's the big, what's the big dog instrument? To play? Well, the bassoons that like it's the brass, like the trombones and the trumpets. They're like the cool kids. Right. They're the fucking boys. Yeah. They're the boys at the back. You know and who's I mean? the ultimate bitch? The ultimate bitch, like oboes. <laughs> <laughs> what is an oboe? Uh, you're fucking telling me, man. I, I, I have no idea what an oboe like, is. Um, uh, I have no idea what you would have heard that would have an oboe in it. Uh, it sounds like a duck. Like it does. It's just like, meh. No wonder meh, these meh, guys meh. get bullied. Wah, <laughs> wah. <laughs> 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 And now the theme to Rosie and Jim, the oboe guys are like, yes. <laughs> this, is where, this is where the boys shine. <laughs> but th this is the weirdest thing about my start to stand up is my first gigs were all in that room right. to a music college crowd. So ah. I, like my first few jokes were all like the most specific things ever, but still like horrifically dark. Right. My first joke that I ever wrote was, what's the difference between a bassoon recital and an abortion? And it was, no one's ever cried at a bassoon recital. I do that bit. <laughs> Aaron! <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but that night when I was on, what point did you go, this is not good? Like, as soon as I clocked at this, the whole symphony orchestra were going to come down, and I was like, right, maybe if I just like, because I was basically run the whole time you were on stage, I was like running about. I Everybody remember. I was going, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Stop playing pool, stop having fun. Yes. Watch the comedian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All stop the enjoying. bitches fuck up at the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what Fucking are we nerds. No one even wants you here. <laughs> you duck bastards. <laughs> <laughs> and there they're going, quack, 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 like the mighty ducks. <laughs> <laughs> There's fucking loaves at them. Shut up. <laughs> Where do harpists fall? In Steven's there? trying to put them in crispy pancakes. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> That's the most recent thing you've ever said. Where, where do harpists fall in the hierarchy? Harpists kind of keep themselves to themselves because they're yeah. like one, maybe two per orchestra and they also have to carry a harp everywhere. Right. So they just have like horrific lives. Yeah. Uh, so it's no one wants to be their mix. And they're, always, they're always a bit emo harpists. Horrific lives, and then they start playing, <laughs> and people are like, oh my God, that's an angel. It is. from heaven. Um, but they're, they're always a bit, like, and they're so, like, you're the most, like, ca caressing of you. Yeah, you're, you're just like, oh, yes. I'm doing this. Um, so they're always a bit, like, they are fairies, I think, anyone who plays the harp. Not in, like, a homophobic slur kind of way. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, Loads of queers playing a fucking harp. <laughs> I'll stick them up as soon, no, mate. The the fair <laughs> Australian homophobe. Uh, the fairy, the fairy fucking queer. <laughs> <laughs> what did you play? I was a percussionist. Oh, shit. Drums? Yeah, yeah drums. And, and are, are you the rowdy boys of the musical college? Yeah, because we fuck all the do. The we're outcasts playing. on the on the triangle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did exams in the triangle. Yeah? Yeah, that was my degree. How can you feel that? You have a degree <laughs> in the triangle. Come in with a square. Oh, I fuck. Know. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> That's the wrong Teletubby head. <laughs> The wrong Teletubby. The guy playing the Opo, he also failed. That's great, Ali Tommy Bandler. Fuck yourselves. I don't Opo. Get it. <laughs> I don't go. get it. But that's one, <laughs> that's one where it like, they're the most frustrating ones because they, they're not terrible, but they could be good. Yes, and it's I just remember I felt my heart broke when you were on stage and went, guys, I hate Open to do this. Open that fire door. <laughs> you went, I hate to do this, but can, can everybody just like shush everybody? And I looked and I was like, 13 at the time. No. Yeah. Oh, and you're, so and you're only sad. 31 but it was like the 40 people who were there were all like he was brilliant uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was that thing of like nice messages but you didn't yeah enjoy you just it. Had, were having a terrible time yeah. and i was just like fuck yeah i think now i'd be way more confident to actually just move everyone into that side room yeah just, just be go like, grab no, your chairs let's go yeah because val morrison did that 
we at went, the Students' Union? Yeah, he was on first. <laughs> but the That's the opener? You'd accidentally met his fan, <laughs> <man>, Morris? <laughs> <laughs> well... What are we, Robin Schwein? Uh, <laughs> who at that point wasn't known. That's why it didn't work. Um, <laughs> he was ahead of his time as well. Me and, me and Mike went to see him in Culloden, wasn't it? And it was like a black tie thing, and it was stuffy, and everyone's at these big like dining tables. Round tables. Yeah, yes, and yeah. it's small, intimate space. And the, he, did, he maybe had done one or two songs, and it was like, it was shit. And I'm a huge fan. And I mean, it was shit in terms of the atmosphere. Mm. He's going through the motions. People are sort of like talking amongst themselves. And then he just stopped. And I went, he's, I said to him, I went, he's walking off. He's not going to do this gig. Mm. And he goes, uh, he just stopped and he went, listen, I'm not continuing until everyone grab, grab your seats, bring them close. So everyone left their tables, took their seats and formed like a semicircle right at the front. Right. And we ended up like from me to him away. And it was unbelievable. Of course. It was so good. That's but, class, but that's what it should have. It should. It yeah. could have been that. There. Yes. I honestly like was scared of you for quite a while after that. I was like, Shane hates me because I no, made that no, up. No, 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 no. Because no. as much as it was soul destroying, it was 150 quid. <laughs> <laughs> now the flights cost me 170. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I lost and massively. You paid 50 quid and the coach you bought for the gig was 300. Exactly. Yeah. I got a Montclair yeah. for it. So. <laughs> and Stephen's fee as well. Stephen, exactly. It was yen. I remember just couldn't. <laughs> So it came out to about three pound fifty. <laughs> you paid him four million yen. He was fine. I could. I remember. I. I, I still. I still follow him on Twitter and and occasionally like he he likes something or whatever. And I just. I remember having a real laugh with him and being like, "You will never have an easier night. Yeah. In your entire life. Yeah. No one's trying to like get. There's no comedians don't need security. Probably three comedians in the world need security. Name That's them. it. Kevin Hart, Paddy McDonnell. <laughs> um, no, he is the, also the security. Yeah. Nah, like, <laughs> like Kevin Hart. Cause, uh, Chappelle, somebody tried to attack him on stage. Dave Chappelle. His security did their fucking job that night. But well, didn't Jamie oh, yeah. Foxx like, kill that guy or something? Well, have you seen the guy? Team with me exclusive. When he got wheeled out and his arm is literally bent the yeah, complete fucked. wrong way. A bunch of, did like, they suspect just, you? Uh, just a- <laughs> yeah. So I just want to do warm up, David. <laughs> David, David, please. So, David Chappelle. It's so funny to call me. So back. disrespectful, <laughs> David. Ch- but it should be more respectful. In school, everyone I hated the culture of people being called their surnames. So I only oh, call yeah, people yeah. their first name. Yeah, that's normal. I don't like the surname thing. It's strange, isn't it? Only for the odd person, because then it, it like makes sense. Or what multiple- school did you go to where they're calling people by their surname? Hogwarts. Fucking it's what? a thing. No, I know I know what you're thinking. Nerds. You're thinking like super posh, like like Mr. Todd, would you would do whatever? Like that's not No, it's not wind in the willows. I'm not expecting <laughs> to be called Mr. Todd, but even just Todd. That's no. But like you but if there's like teachers, I wasn't te- teachers will call you by your surname. No. I get it that no. Oh that that wouldn't happen in my school. Right. It was only like we would call people like there was two Karen's in my year. Right. So it was Foster and Rogers. Right. So Rogers like, sound like a decent folk act. Ro- <laughs> Rogers got called <laughs> K Rod. <laughs> what? Rogers, Karen Rogers got called K Rod, even though Karen was spelled with a C. Well, he's one. But we all call him K Rod. <laughs> did you ever try and push your own nickname when you were younger? Because uh, by the way, what did what did you with Vittorio in in Belfast? What did you get for short? V was most of it. I my uncle. There's like weird ones that only a couple of people call me. A couple of people call me Vito. My uncle and no one else calls me Tory. <laughs> which I hate so much oh Vittori I thought it was like a political thing. <laughs> he's just like you hate poor people right. um, but Tory no, you don't want that no awful yeah, that's but the worst one I've ever is this had. the uncle with the uh, Nolan in the car and the boppers <laughs> yeah, exact same <laughs> yeah he's so got all coming patient. together <laughs> but did you ever try and push a nickname because you didn't like any of those uh, I think I aimed for like Vimto for a while but I I don't know why, I just thought that would be funny to be called Vimto. It's nice, but you probably want to ditch that at, what, 21? That's late to be ditching Vimto. <laughs> nah, I'd love to be 20 in Vimto. I was Tizer up until I was like 25. Tizer? Yeah. No, why no, you no. Tizer? <laughs> but I like it now. Call start calling me Tizer. Willie T, you... Tizer, so, no, I you can't to, say Tizer. I used to get called The Undertaker in primary school. Because your mum died? No. <laughs> 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 yeah, and this is my girlfriend Mary Curie. Uh, 
No, it's because I used to watch wrestling, so when people were like like slobbering at me, I used to do what the Undertaker did and just start going. Because it was scary when he did it. It's not scary when I did it. Yeah, the yeah. hand so doesn't have the same I was, effect. Yeah, I, could, I wasn't bad. I could just do it. <laughs> and then people were being like, oh, you're you're about to suck a dick. <laughs> Who holds it like a fucking goblet? <laughs> you got to do it May, I, may I sample your penis? A so, man with I, a little bit of etiquette. An underhand hand job is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the balls. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I doing this then? Huh? <laughs> Trying to rip a man's bollocks off? Like a Newton's crater. <laughs> <laughs> like you're holding it up to the sunlight. Ah, oh, yes. It's good cock. You don't like being called Willie. Willie. Do not like it. Willie T. I remember the first time I called you Willie T. You hated it, but it's. Do you know what? Do you know what he wants yeah. to push? Will or Wills? As will. I've told him. Well, I've told him a lot. Will. I've told him so many times that ain't happening. You're not a Will. Or Wills. My friends all call me Wills. You're. You're. There's wills? more chance of you getting yep, Will wills. than Wills. Do you know what you could settle for, Bill? Fuck Billy. off, If you Bill. were Billy T. If I drop out of stand-up and become an accountant, maybe. <laughs> I'm not going by Bill. Maybe. Bill Thompson? I know, but Bill you're not Thompson. getting you're not getting Will or Wills. Why? Bill Thompson sounds like a racist <laughs> guy from a play. <laughs> Why? Mean so? Because you're just not Wills. I'm not Willy either. Wills with a Z? And with an S. Mm, with a Z, we could be on to something, but like you're not like a you're not like a Downton Abbey type guy. No, but is Wills isn't Wills Downton Abbey. Is? Yeah, Wills is like... Wills maybe is, I think if it was your last name. Yeah, if it was your last name. Preppy, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, my friend. Uh, loves I, loves Wills. Wills. You go to the book club down in Belfast. No, just Wills, just Wee Wills. Liam? Not we, no, you're not Wee Wills. I am Wee Wills. <laughs> wee what did you get in the Wills? What's I? Huh? <laughs> what? What did you get in the Wills? <laughs> no. Coke money. I read the well, my my nose started bleeding. I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> um I I tried to push Ronaldo. A lot of people did around For you? Around ninety eight, ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. Everyone wanted Ronaldo. I had a co- I have a cousin Connell and we called him Connell Dino. That's decent. Which is great, but why would you be Ronaldo? Ronaldo was just like the, the ultimate football. guy then. I was a massive Ronaldo Everyone played fan. football, wanted to be like but you, you want it to be so good that people just call you Ronaldo all the time? Yeah. That's fucking wild. I know. I pushed it for about four days hard and didn't get any return. I think, like, my dad called me, like, because I made him <laughs> once, you know? And he's like, I can't keep doing Go this. Go by Ronaldo now. Stop um, misgendering me. But <laughs> then you saw me score that goal. Mate. In Lurgan. That's the greatest goal anyone's ever scored, even though we lost 8-1. I that remember- goal was worth 8, I think. I remember the moment of one of the guys in the other team going, my daughter f- thinks she filmed that on her phone. And I wanted to like go home after it and I hung about to wait, wait for, for her to get daughter? it up. And then she went, oh no, I don't think I got it. And I went, open that fire door. Because I'm leaving <laughs> right now. <laughs> You're outdoors. <laughs> yeah. And you run into the changing room by accident. Yeah. <laughs> you go that the was the door. first Comedians football game. The second, you didn't score any more leads at that, did you? Against the Cerebral Palsy boys? Yeah. No, but the I. Cerebral palsy. I, I missed the I set cerebral up palsy game. Did you not play the cerebral palsy game? Fuck sakes! I the set up down for an absolute screamer during that. You did the most I vicious. I had a I had a phenomenal overall game. I was very hungover that day because I remember Dan shouting at me because I let one on run past me because that's like I'm too fucking tired. Yeah, we played the cerebral palsy boys. What? Yeah. It was the most vicious game of football I've ever played in my life. For see, for him, it was like going back to your old club. It was like a testimonial. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah literally, yeah. yeah. Played a half for each. Yeah, no. It was one, a great no, game. Yeah. It was a great game. But they were resting some players because they were playing the bassoon boys next year. <laughs> <laughs> these boys were not resting. I've never seen intensity like it. They were wild. Some of these boys are just were tightly wired. the people. <laughs> what? Wasn't Paddy playing? No. No. Who Paddy's played brother, me? You, Sean Johnny plays. Bo, Dan. Dan. Dan scored a great goal. Um, he did. Sean. Sean Haggerty. Sean. Sean was very good. I remember Sean, Sean Haggerty being very good. Yeah. We'll have to do more of that kind of stuff. We do, we do. I'm trying to play football everywhere on my tour. I'm going to just like jump in on a five-a-side game. Yep. And just play because I don't exercise apart from just playing football. With in New York, I did a high school roof, rooftop pitches on a high school. Football. As in like built them? Huh? Like built them? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'll do on tour. It's not practical. Like I have to stay for ages. You just, you're a day laborer and then you do stand yeah. up. And yeah. I don't always do the gig as well. <laughs> you, but you're, you're just I'm a there. builder. You're stood there with all the Mexicans on the <laughs> side of the corner. Just like, any work today? <laughs> I don't sound like <laughs> <I'm> Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> 
I got you, Mr. Todd. I like, in my head, Stephen is the same guy that plugs the city tours outside City Hall. <laughs> He's you know, more Belfast than I am. The Chinese guy with the thickest Belfast accent. Have you ever world. done the Belfast tour? No. City tours. It's Aye. brilliant. I did it with mates who wanted to do it, and I went, you know, I, 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 I can I've seen enough streets. of Belfast. I know Belfast. Yeah. I didn't know any of that stuff. It was really good. Does he take them, the Chinese guy? Not the one I did. Not the one I did. But I think he just plugs them. I think he's just a flyer. I don't think he's he, on the he bus. He could jump on if he needed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I love that guy. Time will pass. He's like, oh, City Tour, mate. Like, City yeah, Tour. The <laughs> thickest accent <laughs> yeah. of anyone I've ever met. Yeah. What I would like is the reverse. I'd like you in Beijing. That's a whole like TikTok uh, trend. People White guys speaking Ireland Chinese. Over to, oh, right. White guys speaking Chinese. Oh, who's the guy? Asians? Who's the guy who goes everywhere and he like... He pretends he just speaks English. He's a white guy, and then wherever he is, he'll just and they're like talking about him. Yeah, yeah. And then he'll drop drop into whatever it is, and it's it's like not just the mainstream languages. He'll do a bit of like. <laughs> what are the mainstream languages? English, English, Whoa. Portuguese, Mandarin. Portuguese. You went Portuguese fucking early. That's not mainstream. When there's two speaking countries Brazil, in the world, big country. Yeah, but that's ah, two countries. Right. Speaking. Portugal, it's Spanish. Brazil. It's English, Spanish, it's French. French. German is Mandarin not or Cantonese one of them is the most spoken one in the Cantonese world? Mate. Cantonese Cantonese style I wouldn't know it's one of one of the the Chinese languages is the most but he'll do one. languages that's like racist but it is accurate no, what, no it's right <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's not written I'm right one of the Chinese languages you, he'll do like Irish. he'll do like Swahili so, oh shit oh yeah with the clicks you beatboxing to me right now <laughs> <laughs> guys ask me for directions I'm spitting bars off <laughs> Um, I really want to come to your show tonight. I'm sad that I can't. Uh, so you said you get it in Belfast at half eight. Uh, that'll be the second half. So if you maybe wanna... a wee bit earlier because I could go there and then I could go Lavery's after. Come down whenever you're here because the show starts at half seven. But there's like support and stuff. Who's doing support? It was supposed to be Aaron McCann, but he's unwell, so I don't know. I messaged Robbie because he's in town. Is he back? I think for like a day. I don't know what he's here for. If the if it was later, I would ask. I would do it. Oh, that would have been so fun. <laughs> Move it an hour back. And let's get Stephen over and we'll just move it. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't move it an hour back. We'll put it in the bottom um, of the church. It'll, I love that room. I've never done it. It's great. I've never, not even like on a lineup show or anything, I've never done lineup. I've had room. amazing ones, I've had terrible ones at it. I'm very, I have a weird relationship with that room. It's by, it's by far the biggest like solo show I've ever done. I'm very stressed about it. Is there like a weird detail you think you were thinking like walk on music or do, I always, end up with a wee thing where I'm like why am I spending so much time thinking about this yeah well I'm I'm I have a tricky thing because so much of my stuff is like or like my stuff online is crowd work I go out before the support act yeah and do a bit of hello what's a crack what do you do for a job that's stupid ha 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 and then bring on the support act and I'm really stressed about like walk on music for that bit and how to be like this is what the show is going to be and like explaining stuff I've got merch for the first time ever I'm stressed about that okay I don't know it feels weird to sell merch mm -hmm. but I did, like it's just all stress but that's that's a comedian's thing of us just being awkward guys yeah because yeah. it's not weird like people want to buy it's a concert with a lot of people coming to see you and they probably want to get like you get messages. Oh, I thought there would be this and that. Yeah, and you're like, no, no, no. I, 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 I can't do that. I can't, <laughs> yeah, I can't sell exactly you the, the thing, thing you want. We have never did merch for our podcast because we can't settle on what to have. I've never done it in my life. So you should do like half and half. I'm scarf. looking at them. Oh no, but I mean that a life. Oh concert. right, no, I mean we can't settle on what. Imagine to do I still denied it. I was like, no man. <laughs> I'm like your face is on it. No, I'm don't think it is. Brand. Um, I've never had a, any sort of concert ever. Sold what? merch. Sold merch? Never. At any of your gigs? Never. See, you were giving it all the big talk about, you know, people just want it. Why are you stressed about it? You That's what I mean. I mean, we're weird guys who, like, yeah, yeah but you don't have just to stand that. at the counter. No, no, no. I, I haven't am. just seen you on stage and I'm being I like, I'm doing that. I can't afford to. Back. Are you doing a I can't afford to pay anybody. So I'm just doing, I'm at the merch table. But I think that's good because see in the states, say there's like a club, big like top club, like Zanies or something. Mm. Say you have an act come in, and I'm I'm not talking like an act everyone in this room would know. I mean like a, a road comedian in yeah, America yeah, yeah. who's got a load of credits. Hundreds of people will come see them. They'll sell out the shows, and then they do the merch after, and mm. they clean up. That's a lot of time where their money is. Yeah, well that's it. And the strange thing about because my first tour, you don't get any of the money up front. Yeah, I'm fucking skint. Yeah, it's, it's so funny. I'm getting like mega buses to sold out shows in England. 
It's so fucking stupid. I love that people might not know that brand of Mega Bus and we're like, fuck me, Vittorio's got himself like a <laughs> giant bus to go to the limelight from his house. <laughs> you on the Sten line. <laughs> um, what merch do you see? I, I'm always interested in the merch people have. I've, I've got bottle openers and stickers for like the back of your phone or for a laptop. Um, the sticker is because the, the head of the Edinburgh Comedy Awards spoke to me after the nominations and said... I think you're really good. I think you could do really well in America. You'd have to thin your accent though. Right. And I was like very angry. So I made merch that says, the stickers say thick accent, but it's thick with two C's. Get you. Sexy big thighs accent thing. And then a lot of the shows about English people stereotyping Irish people and like all the stupid stuff they think about us. And they think we're all drunk and we all drink all the time and all that stuff. So I've got bottle openers that say fighting stereotypes on them. I think that's funny. So sticker um bottle sticker bottle opener. that's handy to travel with that's the thing because i did i did support for dan nightingale and he had mugs i right. know mugs is like hugely your thing but like we fucked it when it came to mugs hard to travel with how'd you fuck it with mugs went too big that i was gonna say that's a fucking colossus of a mug let me go let me go into this right you're like challenging sports direct with that so i i pushed for the big mug it's i a, said now here's why though these are going to go through the roof in terms of popularity and value I said, we need a big mug. I like a big sports direct mug, but not that big. That's too big, yeah. This is the right size, I thought. And we put them online. They're still available f- to buy. And we sold some. They're not, avail- they're not available to buy. Watch what happens to the value of them right here after I say this. Straight up, like Bitcoin. I thought people were being un- silly. I was like, Tr- I don't know why you're not buying these mugs. These are brilliant. I took one of these home a few days ago and started drinking out of it. Too big. <laughs> See, by the time you get like two thirds of the way down, cold, cold. You have to so, make like a burger. Mouth did you warm the fit? mug before you put? Like, I don't do that. I find that very perverted. <laughs> what you find? Why you not warming, warming the, mug? the mug beforehand? What are you That'll doing? That'll solve your problem. What are you doing? I'm warming the mug. Well, I'm Something a freak. About. I drink diet coke out of the mug every morning. No. My my <laughs> my nanny does the warming thing. Like if I'm waiting on my dinner, she's like, "Hang on, I'll heat up the plates." I'm like, "No, I'm hungry now." Yeah, yeah. yeah my mom freaks doesn't... out about cold plates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, like you're yeah. starving, waiting on your dinner. It's like just ten yeah. minutes on the plates. I'm like, I'm not eating the fucking plate. Yeah. All right, give me the chow mein that I've ordered. We're gonna do regular size mugs. Yeah. Yeah. What what? what no, drink? no, I'm happy with it. Is this tension? Okay. I don't know. Have we stumbled upon that. some tension. No, we have the one Willie is drinking out of. Oh, Wiggy? that's the regular size. Don't call me that's Wiggy. 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 We Wiggy Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> Wiggy's on the... Uh, there, though, we've got those ones on sale. Yeah. They're the right size. Yeah. That's what you want to get. That's a, that's a large, like... What it's you too have. much. But it's then good, this But will, you can get a whole grip of it, because this is... I know. Small for that, but you can but then a, this will become a collector's item, because right. they're not available anymore. Scarcity. Hmm? That's basic economics. But I like the aesthetic of a mug, and I like people to think I'm drinking coffee. So when I go to a cafe, I get a Diet Coke and ask for an empty mug. And then you throw it over someone's face, and they're like, what the fuck? Ah! And you go, ah, and you go, ah it's only Diet Coke. You're just sticky, yeah. not burnt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Coming out of a fire, you're not burnt. You're just sticky, man. <laughs> is, this, is this a story or two? Yes, this is the first date. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. What are you going to walk on to? Because by the time you've... This will go out after you've done it. Unless you don't for the really first bit or for the show show. I Either. think the show show I walk out to a song called Trip the Switch by Booker Brass Band. They're uh they're uh, like a New Orleans style brass band from Dublin. Right. The bassoon boys the yeah. <laughs> he's got, he's got the tunes. I've yeah. booked, booked the bassoon quartet for every show. <laughs> That's what you You get it taped and you get the bassoon boys in. Yeah. Yeah. I think, like, I would, uh, I don't know. Should I have bassoons at my... Yes. If you're going to offer bassoons, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> you get bassoons in life. If you're offered bassoons, you get bassoons. <laughs> Who's turning down bassoons? Nah, 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 I'm good for we bassoons. We should have turned down bassoons at that gig. I should have turned down the gig. <laughs> 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 Willie, for... Uh, by the way, how many dates are your tour? Uh, 30 or something. That's, and how long are you on it for? Like, when is it Two end? months. Okay, so you're packing it in. Pretty packed in. I like. I have to get back to London a couple of times to do podcasts and stuff. But um, yeah, I wanted to keep. And I, I've, I'm trying to do a new show with the Fringe in August, so it needed to be done by June. Really, I wanted to do it earlier. What's your vice on tour when you're traveling? Uh, like kebabs, like chicken donut wrap, but just food. Yeah, F- food's my proper like. 
I'll drink a bit, but I don't really like getting like proper steaming. But I go, I'm gonna eat even healthier on tour, and then absolutely don't. What's well, because you're quite because you you're like the Nando's guy. Yeah. <laughs> And Nando's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Nando's isn't super bad for you. Absolutely not. Every, most things in menu are gluten free and dairy free, which doesn't mean necessarily good for you. Exactly. Well, it's good for you, but not you know. If you're talking you? on the road, though, Nando's is probably one of the best. If you such order a safe right, option, yeah, such Nan- a safe and option. And quite healthy. Um, but you can go really unhealthy in Wagamama. I guess you can go unhealthy in Nando's. Oh, you could bring cat. Right, yeah, what, the Wagamama? Yeah. I'll be unhealthy. <laughs> but it arrive at what the same time What would you like to drink? Oh. Nah, they do it. Uh, that annoys me. It'll all arrive when it comes. Why? What do you mean? What do you mean? Don't do that. Oh, they say it'll all arrive when it's cooked. They bring it when it's cooked. Yeah, it comes so in random wait, order. You know? Times. Right, okay. I want I want a feast. That's just, it is just lazy because like, that is part of running a restaurant. Is and what are they writing timings? down on your, on your, on your... Yeah, because they leave it there. They go, what are you having? And then the guy's half listening. He's like, right, okay. And he writes down 15 with a circle around it and a couple other numbers. But that never then. He never comes and checks that. No. Is that what that is? I thought those were giving me their number and then not picking up. <laughs> well, he's there. 15 on my phone. 15. <laughs> They're not picking up. Kyoza boy. Well, I thought he was in the me, no? Kyoza boy. Stephen again. Stephen again. Stephen again. Stephen again. Stephen again. Stephen again. boy. Willie, you're... Um, Wiggy's looking at him. Kyoza sounds like a culty car. <laughs> um, Sipped up Kyoza. Yeah. The red diesel on <laughs> You're also all selling like hockey. Yeah, like Gilles selling like it? big fucking mugs. Yeah, selling like <laughs> no, it's <laughs> yeah. thankfully it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dan's obviously just ordered four thousand more because I looked over he's crying there. <laughs> My mistake is the tickets are that size as well. <laughs> That's it's like a big money. lottery went in check through your door. <laughs> like those TK Maxx ads yeah. with like going to see Willie Thompson. Willie Thompson. Um, <laughs> like a big charity check. I think there's about just over three hundred left. That's so sweet. And it's in November, so get tickets to that. That doesn't need plugged at all. Go away, Limerick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm also you're just plugging the cities. <laughs> yeah. As destinations. They are good. Yeah. They are nice places to be. Do you know what you're going to walk out to? No. I know what I'm cl- walking off to, Oh, but I don't know what I'm walking Appl- out to. The applause we talked to, I, I We talked about the walking off song. Did we? we did. Are talk- you walking off to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I made him do it. That's <laughs> what I'm walking off to. I'm getting played off to it. But By a band? By a singer, but it's all it's all part of the show. You'll see. You'll oh. see. But also, I'm oh. doing London. Huh? Lon- Books of Fringe run. Yeah. An <laughs> I'm getting the bassoon boys to do a dash for strings. <laughs> Why would they do them for strings? <laughs> they're woodwind. Oh, they're also angry about it. I'm like, you make it work. You're the. This is what an actual bully looks like. I'm like, you make it work. You fucking dick. <laughs> I'm walking off to the Oboe Boys. <laughs> Thank you very much for. <laughs> 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 But oh, um, shows that need plug. I'm doing the Pleasance Theatre in London. You didn't laugh, you cry. <laughs> There's an autistic comedian on the open mic circuit in London, and anytime he gets a big laugh, he gets spooked by it. <laughs> <laughs> And he goes, laughing's good, isn't it? And, just, <laughs> and every time he gets me, he goes, thank you. <laughs> it's like being a crocodile hunter, and anytime you see a crocodile freaking out, <laughs> oh, no. might not be the job. <laughs> You're in the wrong. Just like, oh, fuck, they're The farm man who's scared of fire. Um, although, if he wasn't scared of fire, he might not be a good, good farmer. Might be a bit lax about mm. the whole thing. <laughs> You're doing the Fringe? I am doing the Fringe. Uh, before I do the Fringe, I'm doing the Pleasance Theatre in London. Can't remember the date. I don't need to get that. But yeah, I'm doing uh, the Pleasance Cellar at half five in the Fringe. I'm very excited. All of oh, fuck. We just clash. Don't go to him. Come to me no, at 625. Where are, <laughs> fuck that cunt. Where are you? Monkey Bar 4. Sounds like a film that... Uh, Who's that 4.0. guy? 4.0. <laughs> Ray Liotta would have been in. Danny Trail would be in Monkey Bar. I'm going to change it on the poster. I'm going to make it say Monkey Bar 4.0. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Trust me. It's it worked for a Die Hard. I'm excited um, for the franchise. There's a lot of us going over. Yes, Karen. Like, Karen's coming Karen, over. Karen, Patty, Mickey, there. Mickey Robbie's going to be there. It's going to be the first time I've been over and there's like loads of friends. It's very cool, good. very swag. I like it. Yeah, it's my first arm. Shit, I am shitting myself. Don't worry about it's it. It's not though. That's what it is. It's my first franchise. Well, your first Edinburgh friend, yeah, 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 yeah. Done he only does fifty nine minutes. Yeah. He only does fifty nine minutes, Fred. or an hour and three, you know. But 
This is going to be first hour. First sixth hour. Yeah. It also has to be 52 at the fringe. You can't really do an hour. You know yeah, 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 yeah. You have to get for everybody in, get everybody out. But yeah, it's my first run at it. I'm shitting myself. Because I've heard horror stories and then you hear from people going, it's great. So I had a great time. The fringe is classic. Comedians slag it so much because they approach it in this weird way where they're like, we're like, I'm just going to do like club stuff and make it funny the whole time. And then they get like not good reviews. And I'm like, well, yeah. Because reviewers are weird and like yeah. super sad artsy stuff. So yeah. don't, like you know that that's not what you're doing. So don't fucking stress about yeah. that. I Because I'm trying to do like a weird, like sort of, and I don't do artsy stuff, but I've been doing it on my work in progress. I made someone cry at my, that, that's my mom. Comes to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, it'd be great just to hear something from her, Vittorio. <laughs> How did you make some? You'd be better? buzzing if well, you were with, 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 with the show? With, with the sad bit, the crowd on it, and then laughed again after. Oh. Art. What, oh. like a laugh, like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sad. Oh, wait, he's dead. Ha, 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 Do you get sad doing this up? But no. All right. Oh, That's why it's all fake. See, when you see people like Hannah Gadsby doing the net, and it's like, she's filming the Netflix special, and she's done that show 200 yeah. times. Right. I bet, and she's there, like, welling up on stage. I'm like, you're not. Yeah, no. That's why no I find. Way. That's why I find the, the comedian who does like that real like angry big mad rant and they're on the ground they're going crazy yeah. and it's like this has been workshopped. Yeah, yeah. It's no, I don't. Like I'm that. literally just thought like I'll change how I talk. Like, like I'll be a bit softer with the sad bit, but I'm not being like. like, that like what? <laughs> and, um, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, you did that recently. Uh, William, when we're in a restaurant, when he's saying thank you, turns into a fourteen-year-old private school girl. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you for that. God. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It's, it's called manners. Yeah. Do you know what I realized? Well, I say microwave way. wrong on stage. I have a bit where I say microwave like seven times. And I've been, like saying, I've been saying microwave. Microwave? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mi microwave. Car, like you have to really get that the hard R on the microwave. <laughs> the hard R? <laughs> well, drop the hard R, guys. Microwave. <laughs> I'm still saying it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so your whole, we'll put a link to the whole tour in there. Your Belfast show has has already happened. Yes, when this comes yeah, out. yeah, it will have already happened. Belfast shows are sold out. And then the French as well would be cool, but it's all on the same link. Willie T, what date's the Ulster Hall? 4th of November. Yeah. 4th of remember, November. Remember, remember. The 4th of November. When I blew up the Ulster Guy Fox, Hall. Guy Fawkes. <laughs> <laughs> Much I don't get laughs and do bomb it. <laughs> Fucking no one's doing a show right now. Be, it'd be really funny to do a yeah. whole stand-up show with a suicide vest on. <laughs> <laughs> Mike in one hand, button yeah. in the other. Laugh or no one's saying like... stereophonics next week. <laughs> <laughs> I said that to people they're living here. Yeah. They're like, I didn't get to see stereophonics. <laughs> Fuck, I just want to see Dakota live for fuck's sake. I couldn't think of a single stereophonic song. I make the writer. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have to stop all my old size nines next Stere week. Fuck's sake. Stereophonics <laughs> are good, right? But if you sang their songs to people and they never heard, it, you know, you know, they have like they're brilliant, like Mr. Writer. <laughs> you know, like, what? That's so shit. So I used to sing that when I was like a like a toddler, but I had a really bad huh? speech impediment. You were the singing toddler doing stereo. I used to sing everywhere Make I went. They came from far and wide. My parents thought I had autism because I would just burst in the song. I don't right. know why I would do it, but I used to have a really bad speech impediment, so I just be all about going Mr. Writer. Stephen again. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh well. Um, nearly made a joke there. Would not have made the show. <laughs> <laughs> guys, thanks very much for coming on. Appreciate it, Vittorio. Can I plug my podcast? Wills? Nope. Okay. Guys, thanks. No, I'm only joking. Of course, you can. Of course you can. Uh, Mike and Vittorio's guide to parenting. I do it with Mike Rice, very funny comedian from Kilkenny. Neither of us have kids. Didn't know he's from Kilkenny. He is. I'm a big fan of Mike Rice. Like he's really funny. Lovely really, really funny. Um, but go listen. We've only started. We're on like episode 11. Came out today. So um, it's going really well. And I think it's fun. My blood, my blood, my blood. Go, go watch my blood. Couldn't say it three times. My blood, my blood. And I couldn't. That's because yeah. Aaron Butler appears. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see how that would come across? <laughs> well, guys, thank you very much. See you next time. Yeah.